Hi, my name is Stephen McGee and I'm the author of Health Forensics. And we're here to review this experiment. Now this experiment was started a couple of years ago and uh, it's revealing some very interesting results. And it's a water experiment, so all the plants that we're looking at are all being watered with different types of water. And we're going to go through those plants. I'm going to start with the worst. And you'll notice there's a couple of empty spaces. So the first plant that died was getting coffee, and then the second plant that died was getting standard Tucson water. And I will say that this experiment was started in a very biologically toxic radio wave field that was propagating through my home. And the idea of the water experiment was to see which water gave the best radiation resistance to the plants. And you can see that we've got a great plant down there that we will get to and we will reveal that particular water. So we've had another fatality in this experiment and as you can see from the label this experiment started in June 2013. It's now July 2015 and it's diet lemonade so the diet lemonade plant is now dead and interestingly the diet cola plant is also showing a lot of stress so it doesn't look too bad down here but you can see all the leaves so miniature the dicobacchia typically has leaves the size of your hand and this is what they're looking like up on the top so this was one of the best plants over the two years of the experiment, but just recently it started showing all these strange stresses. And uh, it was quite surprising. So the next plant is microwaved water. So this is water that gets boiled in a microwave and then it's allowed to cool and then we water the plant with it. So it's alive, it's not the best plant, it's down at the low end of our plant growth. So this one here is aged water from 2011. So this is water that I bottled when the Fukushima nuclear disaster occurred. And it's a few years old now. And it actually gives a little bit better growth than the microwave water. So let's take a little look at the AMR, AMI water plant. So this is smart meter water, so the utilities have deployed smart meters all throughout the world and particularly in the USA, they're all over the place and they use transmitters, radio frequency transmitters and the radiation is typically pulsed out of those transmitters and the ones in this area pulse every several seconds and uh, once every 30 seconds it largely depends on the meter and some of the meters actually pulse continuously so this plant is doing a little bit better with this pulsed radio frequency water and we're about halfway through right now so let's look at the next one so this is Brita water filtered so this is just a standard water filter that you can buy in America and you can see that it's actually producing better growth. We've got much better patterning in the leaves, and the leaves are actually larger. And what I'm looking at for growth in these plants is largely the size of the plant, the volume of the plant, and the patterning in the leaves and the size of the leaves. So that's how I'm gauging which is the best growth in these plants. So this one is Wi-Fi water. So this is water that sits next to a Wi-Fi router and gets irradiated by that router. And it's actually doing pretty good. And it is known today that water that's treated with radio frequencies does appear to have properties that is rather comparable to demineralized water. And that's why you see that these plants are around the Brita water filter and the reverse osmosis water because these are largely demineralized waters. So this one 
as you saw on the label, is reverse osmosis water, UV treated. Comes from a machine at the shopping center where I shop. And you see that we've actually got better growth on this plant, much better patterning in the leaves, and it's much better volume to it. So this is steam distilled water, again it's mineral deficient and plants for the most part expect to be watered with mineral deficient water because that's what rainwater is. So rainwater is largely steam distilled water because it comes from evaporation and it's evidenced by this plant. This plant has very large leaves but lots of panning. But you'll be surprised at which is the best water and you can see that this plant is much larger and all these plants are the same age so they all came out of the same batch of plants that I bought from the same shop and this one is tea so tea throughout this experiment has consistently produced the best growth and you'll actually see that the leaves are very large on this plant they're not quite the full size of a Dikembachia. A Dikembachia typically will fill the whole hand, but they're about half the size of a normal Dikembachia leaf. And this location that they grow in is quite toxic because we're quite close to the transmitting utility meters on the home. And the floor in this location is electrified with stray voltage, and that causes the floor to emit strange frequencies of energy as well. And there's a couple of extra plants to this experiment, so I'm going to show you them. So these were added afterwards. So I'm going to show you this plant. This plant gets watered with shungite water. Now, this was sent to me from Russia. And there's a little bag of shungite in the water, and it just soaks in the water. And the shungite, which looks like this, is mineralizing that water. And then I water the plant with it. And the plant's not doing bad. It's not perfect, but as I say, this location is quite toxic where I grow the plants in the home, so I wouldn't expect to see perfect Dyphenbachia growth. But it's, it is certainly is one of the better plants out of the experiment. And you'll notice on the label that the first one actually died, so I had to replace it. And this one is doing much, much better. So this one is not doing too good. And we look at the label, we'll see it's boiled water. So I was trying to establish with the tea, whether it was the boiling of the water or whether it was the actual tea bag that was causing enhanced growth in the plant. And as you can see, the boiled water, it's not doing very well at all. And this plant here, this one, let's take a little look at the label. So again, this is another plant that died and was replaced. But this one actually get, just gets standard faucet water that has a tea bag sitting in it. And you can see that we've got comparable growth to our tea plant that has been thriving. So there's definitely something about water that has tea soaked into it that's absorbed the nutrients from the tea bag and then you water your plant with it. It causes the plant to thrive, even though it's in a toxic location. So that's this experiment for you. As soon as I have more information, I will do another update and let you know how the plants continue to grow. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I wish you the very best of health. Thank you.